This video introduces radians. We should all be familiar with measuring the size of angles using degrees. However, there is another way that we can measure angles, and this is called radians. A radian is a measure of circular motion and we can measure angles in this. Okay, so let's explain what a radian is. If we take a circle, so there's a radius. If we move around the circumference of the circle, in an arc, so an arc is a movement round the circumference. If we move in an arc which is equal to the length of the radius, this would be another radius here. So this angle in here, okay, so theta, theta would be equal to one radian. So obviously one radian is different depending on the sat the circle that you are um, looking at. But basically you take the radius of a circle, you move around the outside of the circumference that same length and the angle in between, which is called a sector, so the angle in the sector um, is theta and theta, or you could call it x, but it's equal to one radian. I'll write that on the next slide in words. So if Take a circle and move around the circumference in an arc length which is equal to the length. of the radius of the circle, then the angle at the centre, oh that says area, the angle, then the angle at the centre is called one radian. Now, how are we going to relate one radian to degrees? Because obviously we, we, we know degrees already. We could probably visualise the size of an angle. How are we going to do the same for radians? Well, there is a relationship between them. And I'll show you the proof here. But really, you just need to remember the last part. That's the important part. And I'll put a box around that to show you the bit that you need to remember. So from previous studies... We should know that for any circle, we have the angle at the center of the arc divided by 360 degrees equal to the arc length divided by 2 pi. And that formula comes from circle theory and angle theory in intermediate to standard grade or national 5 maths. As I said, it's, if you don't know that, you haven't seen it before, I wouldn't worry. This is really just the proof to show you um, a way of relating radians, radians and angles to each other. And you'll, we'll get to that at the end. So if we look at the circle that we had previously, the angle at the centre of the arc was one radian. And that was over 360 degrees. And the length of the arc, we said, was a radius, wasn't it? Because that was the whole point. We had moved round the circumference of the circle a length of r. Oh, sorry, I just realised I've missed out a wee bit in the formula there. It should be arc length over 2 pi r, which is the circumference. 
So we have r over 2 pi r on the bottom. Now what we're going to do here is just try to simplify this and rearrange to find a value for one radian. So we've got an r on the top and the bottom of this fraction on the right hand side so we can cancel them out. We can multiply up by 360 and we will get 1 radian is equal to 360 over 2 pi. And we can divide 360 by 2, so we end up with 1 radian is equal to 180 over pi. Now you can remember that, but on the next slide I'll write the, the one that's probably easier to remember, which is pi radians. is equal to 180 degrees. And I got that basically by just multiplying up by the pi in that last step. So pi was dividing on the right hand side, so I multiplied up on the left hand side and we got pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. And you want to remember this. Oh, remember this. Now the reason we want to remember this is because we are going to want to be able to convert between degrees and radians and radians and degrees and that piece of information will help you to remember that. So the next part um, of this video is going to be showing you how to convert them. So I'll say that we can convert between degrees and radians. And vice versa, so you can go back away from radians to degrees as well. So converting degrees to radians. Okay, so remember we just learnt that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees, and the step before that told us that one degree is equal to pi over 180 if we rearrange. So basically what we've done there is divided 100 in, uh, pi by 180 to get one degree. So using that bit of information, if we multiply by pi over 180, we can convert degrees to radians. So to convert radians multiply by pi over 180 and that's your rule that's the one that you're going to want to remember so we'll put these stars next to that so anytime we're going from degrees to radians we multiply by a pi over 180 and we'll have a look at a couple of examples example one convert 30 degrees Two radians. So we're going to take our 30 and we're going to times by pi over 180. Now what we end up then with is 30 pi over 180. We've basically just combined the 30 and the pi onto the top line. And we want to try and simplify. This is a fraction that we can simplify and we can see that um, 30 and 180 simplify down to a sixth. 30 divides into the top and 30 also divides into the bottom. So that's simplifying fractions. So we end up with pi over 6. And that's radians. Or you can say rads for short. Rads. Example 2. Convert... 150 degrees to radians. Okay, so we have 150 and we times by the pi over 180. Again, we're just combining that top line, so you could really leave this step out and go straight to the answer. Again, simplify this fraction. What will divide into 150 that would also divide into 180? So we're looking for the biggest number that will divide into the top and the bottom. And again, 30 will go in there. So it's 5 pi over 6 we're left with. And that's rads. Now, the last two examples, the answers have been left in, in the form that we would call exact values. So pi divided by 6. 
However, you could convert that to a decimal. In the next example, we're going to have a decimal answer. So I'll explain to you um, how you can write them in two different forms. So you'll see that in the next one. Example 3. Convert 76.3 degrees to radians. Okay, so we've got 76.3 and we're timesing by pi over 180. Now this time we have to use a calculator. So we need a calculator here. The last one we could do in our head because we could simplify the fraction. Um, but here we can't simplify 76.3 and 180 in any way. So you're just a case of using your calculator. There is a button on your calculator that represents pi. You press shift. And then at the bottom, most people, it would have an X10. It's at the bottom of your calculator in the very middle bottom line. Um, some other people, it might say EXP. It will depend on your calculator. So you would do 76.3 times this shift times 10. And then divide by 180. And you end up with 1.33 radians or rads. So it's just, it's useful to remember that pi is equal to approximately 3.14. Okay, so we can think about pi as being a decimal. It, it isn't exactly 3.14, we've rounded it there, but it's useful to remember that. So 76.3 is less than pi radians, okay, because remember that is equal to 180 degrees, that's what we learned at the start of here when we did that proof, so pi 3.14 is equal to approximately 180 degrees, so if we have an angle of 76.3, we know that our decimal should be smaller than 3.14, and that just keeps you right, so we expect 76.3 to be less than 3.14. Okay, which it is. So we are happy there with that. So sometimes it's a good idea to, to keep that in mind when you look at the angle in de degrees, you can have a, a fair idea of what it should be in decimals. If you can get an exact value, then try to keep your answers an exact value. It tends to help with the math further on. So the pi over 6, the 5 pi over 6, it's good to keep them as exact values. And particularly when we go on to look at solving trig equations with radians, it, it can be easier to keep them in exact values. However, you would still get all of your marks for a question if you had done it in degree into decimals as well. Right, let's look at converting... radians to degrees now. So right at the very start again we learnt that one radian is equal to 180 over pi. So if we want to convert radians to degrees we multiply by 180 over pi, and that's our rule this time. And what you might have noticed is that basically that's just that fraction turned upside down. So we multiply by pi over 180 to go from degrees to radians, and we turn the fraction upside down to get 180 over pi, and we multiply by that if we're going from radians to degrees. There is another way that you can do it. And basically, we talked about it before, we said it at the end of the last slide, that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So, however, it is sometimes easier to replace pi with 180 degrees and simplify. Okay, so that will only work in 
radians where you're given exact values. If you're given exact values and there's a pi in that value, you can replace the pi by 180 degrees and then you're just simplifying the, the calculation down till you get an answer. I will show you some examples using both ways. However, if you're originally given radians and it's a decimal value, then you would not be able to use the second method. You would have to use the first method, which is multiply by 180 divided by pi. So it is a good idea to remember that one. Example one. Convert pi over 4 rads 2 degrees. So we have pi over 4, this is going to be method 1 first of all, and we're going to times that by 180 over pi. And if you combine that into one fraction, which you don't really need to do this step, but if you do, you would end up with 180 pi over 4 pi. You'll see that the pi's can cancel out because there's one on the top and one on the bottom. And then we just need to do 180 divided by 4, which is 45 degrees. Or if we want to use the second method, we have pi over 4. If we replace the pi with 180, we end up with 180 divided by 4, which is 45. Now imagine that you're saying, well, the second version is much simpler. Yes, it is. And as long as there's a pi in the value, go with that, that method because it is much simpler. Example 2, again, we'll do both versions. Convert 2 pi over 3 rads 2 degrees so we've got 2 pi over 3 times 180 over pi so we end up with 360 pi over 3 pi and the 360 comes from the 2 times 180 the pi's cancel out and we're left with 120 degrees or we go for the simpler method, so we have 2 pi over 3, which is 2 times 180 over 3 if we replace the pi. So we end up with 120 degrees again. So you should get the answer with both methods, the uh, same answer with both methods. <coughs> Excuse me. And now the last example. Example 3. Convert 0 0.273 rads, 2 degrees. Okay, so this is the, the example that I mean you cannot replace pi with 180 because there's no pi in the rad value. So we have to use the first method. So we would do 0 0.273 times 180 over pi. And again, you would need to use your calculator here. And we end up with 15.6 degrees. And that's radians. It's an introduction to radians and it is showing you how you can convert between degrees and radians. For the level of mass that you're studying, you have to be able to deal with radians just as easily as dealing with um, degrees. Because you're going to be looking at the graphs of trig functions in radians. You're going to be looking at solving trig equations in radians and it, they are harder than doing in degrees but you will get the hang of it just bear with it